Hey everyone, remember that show Teen Titans? Of course you do. We're going to look at everyone's favorite Titan. No, not that one. Nope, not her. Heh, <laughs> I wish. No! No, he's, he's not even a Titan anymore. No, we're talking about Cyborg. Jeez. Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the living Swiss Army knife, Cyborg. While he does have an impressive arsenal of gadgets, first we're going to look at his most intimidating aspect, his brain. Victor Stone had himself fused with multiple cybernetic parks after an accident and has a direct computer neural link. This means that he has direct communications with the computer. This is all and well, but look at where he has connection to the computer. Right there, in the cerebrum, which has many controls over the human body, but the biggest being the decision making. In a recent study, a supercomputer was said to have the reasoning ability of a four-year-old. With this incredible strength and arsenal of weapons, Cyborg is an incredible foe, but who would he really be fighting against? Victor was always an athlete, but could not compete after his mechanical transfusion, which allowed him to have great strength and speed, making it unfair. He was naturally upset about this. His reasoning should have been thrown off and made him DC's next villain. He'd be angry at the world and his debt and most likely would have killed him because he was in a fit of rage. It is not uncommon for children to say things like, I hate you, and I wish I would never have to see you again to their parents when they're upset, without knowing the true volume of the things I said. They also come to the realization that what they did was wrong and get very upset because they know that it was an upsetting comment and would apologize and maybe even cry. Now take this reasoning, put it into a teenager who is rash and emotional and he is bionic. He blames his father for his inability to live a human life. Most likely, he would kill his father and then wallow in the realization of what he did was a horrible crime and make more rasticisms. He would probably end up being the next Joker. So that's just a little bit of extra info. Now for actual robo breakdown. Cyborg weighs an extremely light 175 kilograms. This is about 386 pounds. Well, this may sound heavy, but considering that Cyborg is 6 foot 3 or 1.9 meters and is about 90% titanium, he should end up weighing roughly 1,000 pounds. But considering that all his parts are pure titanium, we can assume that he does not have a solid titanium exoskeleton, so the wire may run through his body. It would be very possible for there to be an effective exoskeleton suit that would be made of titanium and carbon fiber. This would actually be insanely plausible compared to the world of comics, where science is stretcher than a wet rubber band, though power armor is not unheard of today. There was an inventor by the name of Troy Hertzabees who created a suit called the Trojan. It looks kind of like a Spartan Halo suit. This suit is extremely durable, but made to be light so it's made out of carbon fiber. If you were to create a mix of this suit with carbon fiber and titanium, you could have a very strong and resistant suit. If you're somehow able to create a way to lift extra weight, it could turn out to be extremely effective. But that's not possible, right? I mean, something that allows you to lift a thousand pounds with ease? Come on. But wait, what's this in the corner? Oh, it's exactly what we need. This is a very strong exoskeleton called the Hulk armor. No, not Hulk with a K, with a C. I'm just as disappointed as you are. It is not able to consistently withstand the weight of Cyborg and not come close to his bench press of five metric tons. Though it's just an exoskeleton. You can run a much powerful version of this directly through you. You could create something that might be able to do the trick. Considering that this is comics and there might be slightly more advanced technology, this is not an entirely irrational concept. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Super strength because of robots is one thing, but he actually thinks through his computers. How do they possibly respond? Certainly, he can't just stick some wire in a brain and give someone the ability to control computers. Well, no, you can't. That would be a horrible idea. But you can establish a neural link with machines. A man named Pierpello Petrozillo? Pet, 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 I don't know. No, I did not say that right. He was able to create a machine that allowed him to link up his brain to a robotic hand. He was able to move this hand with his mind, even when it was across the world. So considering that this was six years ago, I'm sure we could do something that will allow to make this walking tank control its C-3PO self. Now I want to talk about his main weapon, his sound cannon. While the traditional sound cannons don't blow things up, they just make a really loud, high-pitched noise to injured enemies, Cyborg is a lot different. Again, it is actually possible. It would not fit in his arm perfectly like it does in the comics, so it could potentially be mounted on. If he had a strong enough cannon on his arm, he could vibrate the sound waves to match the frequency of the objects he shot at. He would have the potential to destroy anything. Now for those who don't understand what I mean by match the frequency, it's basically saying that objects have a certain frequency. If Cyborg was able to access the infinite database and hone in on the exact wavelengths of the objects he shot at, he could match the frequency and make the sound vibrate at the same wavelength. 
This would result in the objects breaking apart, not like an explosion, but more like when you take out the support column for something. It would just fall down. So it would not work exactly like it does in the comics, but the sound cannon would still be an effective weapon. Now back to the weird brain transplant thing. If we were to infer that we're talking about the new 52 version of this character, Cyborg got his implant out of the need of life support after he was hit by a car. This means that his brain is most likely damaged. If a computer had to be designed to replace Cyborg's genius level intellect, it would have to use quantum technology. How a quantum computer works is that instead of only having two states, those being 1 and 0, 0 for being off and 1 for being on, a quantum computer can use quantum theory to produce three states, 0 being off, 1 being on, and 2 being both. This means that a computer can process information exponentially faster than any other computer. Therefore, it might actually be able to replace Victor's brain. I know there are more than what I've talked about that make Victor Stone the cyborg, but it would take hours to discuss everything about this Swiss Army knife. All in all though, despite his outlandish seeming feats, Cyborg is one of the more plausible heroes out there. You could potentially have some of the same powers and characteristics. All you have to do is be hit by a car and hope you wake up in a Robocop version of yourself. So remember, whether he's murdering his father or pressing 4 tons just for kicks, Cyborg is no better than a walking GLaDOS. Remember to leave a like and comment on what superhero you would like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientist, signing off. Mm -hmm.